I was told by our data architect that always that always sends alarm bells straight away for me, like in the sense that some sort of hierarchy in organization where someone talks down to someone. But I was told by our data architect to avoid using pivot and unpivot clauses in the Oracle because they are not natively implemented. I'm not really sure what he meant by that, but is this true? Let's explore. Let's look under the covers of pivot and unpivot to see if we can understand what we mean by native implementation. So for those that aren't familiar with Pivot or haven't used it for a while, there's certainly not a commonly used SQL expression in Oracle. Here's some simple examples. I'm using a standard employee table here from scott.amp, which has normally 14 rows across three departments. So a Pivot simply takes rows and based on some rule, shuffles those values to become columns. And because generally we're taking multiple rows and shrinking it, it becomes an aggregation. So in this case, I'm saying, take your department numbers, and there's three of them in the employee table. There's department 10, 20, and 30. And sum up the salary pivoting on those department tables, the, the, the department values. And therefore, we actually get a single row because I'm only picking out the department of salary from the table. So if I'm pivoting a department number, the only thing I can sum up is salary. Therefore, I get a single row back. And that effectively is the distribution of salaries per department. Rather than three rows, department 10, 20, 30, we get three columns, department 10, 20, and 30. That's a simple pivot. The cool thing with pivot is, depending on what values, what columns you put into the initial query, that determines the granularity of the grouping. So in this case, the syntax is the same here. I'm saying pivot on department number, do a sum of the salary. But because I have this extra column in the source query, that effectively becomes an additional grouping. So now I'm grouping by job number, and for each job, I'm now getting the totals for department 10, 20, and 30. So that's pivot in a nutshell, nice and simple. So how do we dig into the internals of a pivot or an unpivot? Obviously, we don't have source code access. But one of the things we can do is see what the optimizer sees when it comes across a pivot and how it chooses to optimize that query. Now, for those that are unfamiliar, to see what the optimizer is doing, we have an event trace called 10053. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to find out what my trace file is going to be, which is going to be this. I'm running Oracle 19 here on Windows. I turn on my 10053 trace, which says dump out what the optimizer sees in order to parse this query. And then I do a simple explain plan. So this is my most simple of the um, pivots, just department number and salary, but that came with that with the one row result. And then I turn the trace off. Because this is Windows, it will hold that trace file open and therefore render it inaccessible until I end the session. So I need to disconnect on Unix. I wouldn't need to do this. If you've ever looked at a 10053 trace file, I won't bring it up now. They're massive. It dumps out all the optimizer parameters, all the permutations, all the kind of joins it might do, all the stats for each of the tables involved. There's a lot of stuff going on there. However, tucked away in the middle of it somewhere is after the old database has done all its transformations, it says, okay, this is the actual query that you present to me. This query, this is the query that actually I'm going to optimize. That's what I'm going to optimize and therefore run. So we're going to go dig for that. And the way we do it is, it's normally tucked between the two terms, final query and KKOQBC. So I'm using a simple awk command here to get all the lines between that, and it gives me this output. I'll remove the final and the, the, the first and last lines using that, and that'll give me my final query. And then I've got a little simple SQL formatter here that runs under node to actually spit it out in a nice formatted format. So I think this is what our data architect means when he says it's not natively implemented. When you run a pivot, SQL in the Oracle database. This is actually what the database is running. It's like we do a pivot in first principles. I'm doing a case statement when department number equals 10, then bring back the salary. If it's not 10, it brings back null, which means it doesn't get put into this summation. So we're simply scanning the table and doing a sum on a case statement for the first column, sum on a case statement for the second column, sum on a case statement for the third column. And there's our query. Yes, you could argue that there's not an inherent part in the optimizer which says this is a pivot. What we're doing is simply saying, when we see the word pivot, turn it into a non-pivot style syntax query as we would used to write back in old versions of the Oracle database and optimize that. Let's now do the equivalent of an unpivot and see what happens there. I'll do a very simple table here because it'll be easy to unpivot. Let's say I've got a table of some soccer players. So I've got uh, player and the goals they scored in the first half and the goals they scored in the second half. So in my first table, I got Pele, scored a goal in each half. I got Messi, he scored two goals in the first half and one in the second half. That's how it looks like as a raw table, not unpivoted. 
and I want to unpivot it now such that the goals aren't two columns, the goals are just a single column. So this is what an unpivot command looks like. I'm saying, I'm gonna create a column called goals, I'm gonna create a column called half, goals is first in the first half column becomes the value first, goals in the second half column becomes the value second, and therefore I've flipped my two row table now into a four row table, and there's a simple unpivot. We can go through the same process. Locate the name of our trace file, turn on our 10053 trace, explain plan for that same unpivot command, turn off our trace, disconnect from our session, go hunting in the trace file, run it through our little node routine to actually pick out the SQL and format it. And that's what an unpivot looks like when you actually look at the optimizer trace. What does it do? It does what we would do if we did from first principles. First of all, get the goals S1 column from my table and list out all the rows from that. And then go back to my table again and get the goals S2 column to bring it into the same table. So I've taken two columns and flipped them to become rows by doing a simple union all. You could argue, yes, it's not a native implementation of pivot. We're transforming the query into first principles pivot and unpivot. The thing that absolutely blows me away is not that we the data architect said it's not natively implemented, is that the data architect said, don't use it because of that. For me, not having a native implementation of pivot and unpivot is a good thing, a really good thing. And let me give you another example. Back in Oracle 12, we invented this thing called the identity column. And so we said, yep, yeah, if you want to have a, a unique number for a column, you can say generate it as identity. What do we do behind the scenes? We create a sequence to man implement that facility. And it's just given that internal name. Same thing happened here. People squeal. It's like, oh, you haven't really got identity. You're just using sequences. You've already had that stuff, you know, blah, blah, blah. I think this is super smart, whether it's the unpivot pivot or whether it's something like this, because old stuff works better than new stuff generally. If, if I came to you and said, I'm going to invent a whole chunk of new kernel code in the Oracle database to implement generator's identity or to implement pivot or unpivot, brand new code, we're going to have to test it, et cetera, et cetera. Or we can take code that's been there for 30 plus years, has been through every regression test known to man, has been out with millions of customers who have found every niche case, every potential bug, and we've been through that 30 year history and fixed all those little idiosyncrasies and tweaked it and tuned it and made it better. Which would you rather have? I've, it blows my mind that people think that if we embark upon new code path, that somehow that's gonna give them a better experience. It might, and I stress might, give you a better experience 10 years down the track, but there'll be 10 years of pain in doing so. I think it's very, very intelligent to always exploit robust, mature technology you already have in order to build new features and offer new features to people and still exploit all the benefits of having something that's been tested to absolute death. So yes, pivot and unpivot, go back to first principled code. That's a good thing because first principled code has been tried and tested. There's all sorts of optimizer tweaks to optimize for those particular cases. It's a very tried and true and tested method of building features. Mm -hmm.